What's up, King Nick? Thanks for the $12 super chat. I can't believe the wealth of info here after finding your channel less than a month ago. Appreciate you, King. This is awesome. All right. So what we're going to do, and let me get into my announcements since this is so crazy. There's a T-shirt on the table. I All right. First of all, there's going to be two notification lists, and I'll just have to come back and put them in after the stream goes on for a minute or whenever I can post it. But there's going to be two notification lists. So I want you to come back to the stream, and I have both of them posted. For Hustlers Kung Fu Life Skills, it's going to be an email list. And for Disruptive Mail, it's going to be the text notification. So I'm going to test that out. Mr. and Mrs. Fuller, got a notification I'm live? Cool. Let's talk about, I'm going to get present here. And also, I'm going to, I guess, push this back a little bit. Because it's all up in my grill and it's making me nervous. All right, once again, this is Glendon, your hustling godfather with this jacked up stream. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. But the show will go on. The title of this and make sure that that's working. I don't even see the title. Oh, hold on. There we go. Go to college, start a business. The rules of getting money have changed. The Hustler Papers. I'm going to go way back, way back, way back when I was broke. And when I say broke, I wasn't like regular broke. Regular broke is... You run out of money before you run out of month, but you still have a place to stay, food in the refrigerator, car, whatever. Well, I was beyond broke. I didn't have enough money to afford a decent place to stay, hence the boarding house. Uh, it was a skill set problem, <clears throat> which we've had this conversation because I was uh, checking out a video this morning and they were talking about going to college and how people who go to elite colleges don't have a problem finding jobs which I know that to be false because it's like if you go to an Ivy League college or something like this you get this on your resume I know of people with Ivy League educations that cannot find jobs so that's false so that's perpetrating the narrative but to get deeper, I had to make that decision. Start a business or go back to college. I knew that I needed more education. I knew that I needed to learn more to make myself more marketable. I knew that I needed <clears throat> some help. And then this is what began the Hustler Papers because I, I really thought about it. It was a fundamental shift in mindset. That's what the Hustler Papers are about because it became me literally against the world. And what I mean by that is I became very, very selfish. There is a fine line between being selfish and being um well, being charitable, there's a fine line between being charitable and foolish. It's really, really fine because I still to a degree I'm a person that'll help people out. But I'm very selective on who I help now, and I never was selective. Anyone was in a state of need, I help out to the best of my ability. What happens with that is if you're trying to save someone who's drowning and they're panicking more than likely you can drown as well. So you have this situation where you've got to be pragmatically selfish. I know it sounds crazy because I believe in the abundance mindset. I believe in helping people, but you've got to quantify the people that you help. This is the reason that <clears throat> you have people who are generationally poor people are trying to help them people are putting stuff out people are making programs people are handing them direct cash benefits in hand 
and they're still in that space. And you got to ask yourself why. They never developed the hustler mindset. They never, ever got to a point where it was in their best interest to succeed. There are many people who, because I'm listening to this, this stuff about people with college educations. And I, I, went, I used to go to this church. Like the video that I put on there like uh, talking about the friend zone on Disruptive Mail. I used to go to her church, and there was this girl who had graduated from Harvard, and she literally lost her house. And she found someone to rent her house while she was living with someone else because she couldn't find a job. Harvard graduate. And I, I got to see many, many people who were in bad situations that had great formal education. Now, this is where we come out into the learning session. This is where we break out the whiteboard. Now, let's move over here. And I've talked about it, but I ain't go deep as I'm about to go deep. First of all, there we go. And let's see. Yep. I got to make sure that this is straight. Hold on. It resets every stream. There we go. Make sure you can see everything. So I don't have to uh, limit myself. There is formal education there is informal education and then there is a hustling business education So you got, this is what probably 90% of the people think this is the best education. This is the only education. This is what you should do. And then you have informal education, which is apprenticeships, Plumbing, welding, or I should say informal or alternative education. And then there is this bad boy right here. I was headed toward this. I was in that boarding house. And I was sitting there thinking, I am tired of being broke. I'm tired of not having money to do the things I want to do. I am sick and tired of being a broke person. I am sick and tired of being a person with no, no future, no hope. Nobody was going to save. And this is some lessons that I learned. I learned that you need to wear your own cape. And what I mean by this is you got to be your own superhero. So I'm in this situation where I am in a state of acute lack. I don't have the things I want. I don't have health care. I don't have dental. I have nothing but myself and a small duffel bag of personal belongings and a few clothes. That's all I had. And I was looking at it and I was like, you know what? This is a problem. This is a big, big problem. How do I solve this problem? So my first thing was I'm going to I'm going to just put it up here. I sat down and I tried to figure out 
<clears throat> what was the best formal education that I can get? So I was thinking, I'm going to be a stockbroker. So I went ahead and I got the catalog to Georgia State. I was going to go to Georgia State, get my undergrad in finance, then go get my MBA. And I calculated that to be about thirty-eight thousand to forty thousand. That was not bad. That's not the thing that got me. It was this six to eight years in school. I'm not going to lie. That scared me. That scared the hell out of me. I was sitting there like, okay, it's 1999. I know that the college credits from University of Sherman are not going to transfer. More than likely, I'll be good if I get my freshman year out. So I'm looking at three more years of undergrad. <laughs> then two years of grad school. So that's six. And then I just put in incidental time. So we're looking at eight years. This is 1999. So before I made that leap, I did this. I did the math on occupations. And I noticed something that was real interesting. When I removed... All of the doctors, engineers, attorneys, millionaires. Do you know millionaires are included in these stats? And billionaires. So when I removed all of them, income differential was not that different between a person who was a high school graduate that got themselves into a decent job and a person with a degree that did not specialize, meaning you got a degree but you weren't working in your field. Someone goes to law school, they're going to be an attorney most of the time. Someone goes to med school, they're going to be a doctor most of the time. You go to engineering school, you're going to be an engineer most of the time. So this just scared the shit out of me. So I could go to school for six to eight years and be making more money than I was making currently because I was in a very bad situation. But that really, and I, gotta, I want you to understand, I was stripped of my family, stripped of my house. Stripped, so I was at rock bottom. And when you're at rock bottom, the first rung of the ladder looks like the top of a skyscraper because you're so low. So I still, at my lowest of my low, I had the ability to look forward into the future. And thank God I had that ability because these six to eight years, I would have been spending probably 150K when you count up tuition, when you count up a place to stay, you count out income lost. I could have been, you know, because these are real costs that pop up. And they're called opportunity cost. So the opportunity cost of a formal education. is rent, lost income, lost opportunity, and actual hard cost of going to school. <clears throat> so 
So whatever your tuition was, whatever your, your student loans, double the math. So if you got student loans of $30,000, when you double the math, it costs you seventy to eighty thousand dollars to go to school, because this is something that people don't talk about. The lost income opportunity cost and the hard cost of going to school. It's kind of like when people buy cars, and you ask them like, "What's your car payment?" And they're like, "It's four hundred and fifty dollars a month," and I'm like. Well, what's your insurance? Oh, 120. How much you spend for gas? About 200. So what you're really saying is your car payment is about $800 a month. This is the same defunct, deficient math that people use when they talk about education. This is where people go astray. This is where people have problems. This is where people go to the wayside because there's an opportunity cost for doing something. There's an opportunity cost for not doing something. So I looked at that and then my decision was to start a business. But I knew I had no experience No experience. I had no money. I had <laughs> no assets. I had nothing. It's pretty bleak, isn't it? But reading the book, The Power of My Subconscious Mind, I had a dream. I had ambition. So here are the steps I took. Got a job. Jobs are not bad things. Jobs can give you skills as well as money. So I got a job, but I had... I had a plan. And this is the first time that I got a job and I had a plan to leave my job. I was ruthless. I was like, I'm going to stay here just long enough to get what I need and I'm out. I was ruthless to the job. I came in on time. I worked very hard when I was there, but I was always on the lookout for an exit. Then I found another job after meeting this girl at Neocon. And she's like, I paid $185,000 last year selling office furniture. So I went to panel systems. Then business environments. And then my own thing. So these are the new rules of making money. I leveraged these three jobs into my own thing. I got jobs in areas that would give me skill sets to make money doing whatever this was a plan and this is kind of like the hustler papers because there are many people who are in these situations there are people who could do much better than they currently are if they had a plan if they had a situation a, a blueprint so to speak like the hustler papers because I'm, I'm gonna write this up real nice but Looking at that situation of going from absolutely nothing. And I don't want any of y'all to experience that. The loneliness, 
the depression. I don't want any of y'all to experience that. With that said, some of you are going to have to experience it to get it. You're going to have to go through these trials and tribulations to move to the next level because this is something that I just realized. When I call it getting knocked out the the matrix. I gained freedom. And that's a funny thing. Because I was all upset for being kicked outside the matrix. I was trying to climb my way back in. I was trying to get back in. But I gained freedom. And freedom, and this is one of the things is very ugly when you get freedom when you get 100 percent freedom it is like a piece of a diamond in the raw it's like this big clump of carbon coal that's been compressed and it is up to you to shape that diamond into something pretty and shiny because true raw unfiltered freedom does not look like success it is the building blocks it's the ingredients it is the tools of success that's what unfiltered freedom is and when i was in that situation you know my ex-wife ran off with the kids i didn't have kids to look after X what in my job? I didn't have a job. So even though I had lost so much, when I slowly dawned on me that now my 24 hours of a, per day could be used to do something else. Now this wasn't my fault. This wasn't my choosing. This was cards I was dealt. But When people gain raw and unfiltered freedom, they usually freak out because no one tells you how to deal with it. And what's funny, about 70, 80 years ago, this was called rugged individualism. Your great, great, great grandfather probably had to build his own house, probably had to plow his own land, cut down the trees, himself clear the land build a house and then fashion some kind of business or enterprise to make money because i hear this conversation all the time glendon everybody wasn't cut out for the rigors of business ownership and i say bullshit everyone's cut out to breathe everyone's cut out to eat everyone's cut out to put gas in their car Everyone's cut out to have a place to stay, whether you're renting or have a mortgage. So if you can be in a situation where you need these things that money is dependent upon, what is this cut out business? And I'm going to explain that, too, because this goes back to the raw and unfiltered freedom. How many of y'all remember Saturn? The car maker. They gave. A lot of their employees freedom to make decisions. A lot of these people revolted. I think, uh, let me see if I can find it. Let me set this up. Oh, I can't find it here. But I think I know where I can find it. Hold on a second. People at Saturn, and I may be able to find this. Because this will blow your mind. They had the ability to do work the way that they wanted to without an overseer. But they refused it because they were not used to raw and unfiltered freedom. They're just not used to it. 
Saturn workers sue. And this may be <clears throat> that's not the word because Saturn worker have a problem because this is going to be very old with new management I think this should get me to it uh, let's see I think this is it um, come on come on come on continue the site Good Lord, they got all these ads and stuff. It's kind of crazy. But it's like, two, that, this is March 2010, like almost nine years ago. Uh, in the 1980s, Roger Smith, then GM's chief executive, Donald Elfin, head of the United Auto Workers for the company, stood together behind the creation of a new American car maker. But their successors were less committed to breaking tradition. The initial passion and visual gradually dissipated and now it's being officially extinguished. Saturn stopped production, production in October and is expected to close down completely later this year. Apparently GM and the United Law Workers really didn't want a different kind of car company or a different kind of car. Saturn shut down because they empowered their employees to make decisions. They gave their employees leadership abilities they gave them the ability to make decisions on the fly much like the marines anyone in the marines that have a good idea they can run with it and this is what they tried to bring to saturn and it was working but it ran aground because people did not want to have unfiltered unfiltered raw freedom because with that comes demands with that comes responsibility they didn't want it and this car company that started off with great promise, it folded in on itself because the United Auto Workers, I mean, essentially, you had someone who was making $40 an hour to turn a screw, did not want to be empowered with responsibility because they didn't want to do any more work. It's like, this is it. This is what it is. United Auto Workers, they gave me this contract. This is what I'm supposed to do. You try to make me do more than what's in my contract. I'm not going to do what's more in my contract. And we're going to have some problems with this. People don't want the rugged, raw, and unfiltered freedom of entrepreneurship. They don't want that. But there's what you want. There's what you don't want. And there's what you have to do. I'm telling you right now. In the next 10 to 15 years, you will see this in our lifetimes that jobs as we know it are going bye bye. Everyone's going to have some type of entrepreneurship contract or most workers with whoever they're working for. They're going to have to be accountable, self-directed and driven to be up in the upper echelons. And it's already that like that now. How many of you are knowledge workers? You work independent at home. And if you're not um, doing what you need to do, they're going to get rid of you. Because, see, when you work at home as a knowledge worker, as an independent person, you are 100% accountable for your work. You got to turn in receivables or deliverables. You got to do something. And this is why people who work from home usually work a lot. Because there's very little difference between working at home and working on your own. Because that's what you're doing when you work from home. There's a big problem because a lot of people have had to have conversations with their family. Yeah, I'm here, but I'm not here. When this door closes, I'm at work. Don't disturb me. 
if I was at an office, you wouldn't be calling me here saying, make me a peanut butter sandwich, mommy. You wouldn't be doing that. But this is one of the things that happens with people. Let's see. Uh, once again, this is and not supported by ads. I want everyone that's listening to me to hit $10 Super Chat. And if you catch the replay, you can go below the video. It'll be there because as soon as this is over, I'm going to change everything. You can go below and hit the Super Chat via PayPal. All right, so let's get into this real quick. What's up, Arden? Elon, what's up from South Africa? How things are going there, man? I hear things are popping in South Africa. What's up, Jajar? More and more colleges want their students to start a business, successful businesses, and great, mar or mar or great marketing tools for college. Absolutely. When you can point to one of your graduates that's living in a mansion and owns a company, that's that's. It's amazing. This is what YouTubers do. This is what the hustler porn guys do. You see how fat it works for them. What's up, SB? Jamar Thrasher, I have a graduate degree from Carnegie Mellon University. I think that's Chicago, right? And still had problems getting a job. In 2012, I founded Kennedy Blue Communications, a public relations firm that serves youth organizations. Awesome, man. You're welcome, Dion. Uh, let's see. King Nick, I recommend it younger cousins and anyone college educated to pursue multiple internships, co-ops while in school. That experience is one thing that saved my ass upon entering the job market post grad. That, and that's a good point because you can no longer go to college and get a 4.0. They're going to ask you, do you have experience that we can use right now and if the answer is no um you ain't getting that job they want like look look what's happening to the nfl remember when they would draft players and let them sit on the bench for a year or two and let them get acclimated to the nfl game mm -mm. if you go on in those first two rounds you gonna start and if you can't start they're gonna get rid of you Look at Russell Wilson, Cam Newton, right out of Auburn, started for the Carolina Panthers, almost won a Super Bowl. Well, got close. They got to the Super Bowl. Employers of today and tomorrow are going to want to pop your top and have a cool, refreshing drink. And if they pop your top and it's like spoiled or like, OK, we're going to just throw you away. That's where it is. So that's a good point, King Nick. Um, Pamela, that's what I want. Freedom. Money was never my top goal. Ken Bursa, hustle, hustle. What up, hustlers? Mr. and Mrs. Fuller, when you, you're out of the matrix, it's impossible to go back. Very, very true. Kevin Burns, if it's not on your shit, you're out. <laughs> Got to stay up on tech. If you're a tech, for example, got to study and better yourself all the time. And sometimes you have to unlearn what you've learned because the new way is better. And you got to clear your mind of all that old knowledge and gain this new knowledge to be competitive. Get, oh, yeah. Because working at home, you got to be self-directed because there ain't nobody watching you. There's no time clock. But if you don't have personal discipline, you ain't going to make it. What's up, Andrew Hill? Thanks for the $10 super chat. Kevin Burns, it's time to be a coder. It's time to be an entrepreneur. It's time to be a creative. It's time to do so many things because coding is only half of the equation. They have people who are called user experience or UI designers. These are the people that design this um, interface here on YouTube that you see. And they get paid a lot of money because they want to make this intuitive as possible. Oh, for some reason, I thought it was in uh, Chicago. I didn't know. It's in Pittsburgh. 
All right. So this is the thing with formal and informal education. We have adopted this policy that everybody needs to go to college. Everybody don't need to go to college. Most folks who have degrees don't really need them or use them. What you need is marketable skill sets right now. I don't have a college degree. I was in college. I went for almost two years. None of that stuff that I learned there, I use. I have gained more money from learning how to do YouTube. And what is doing YouTube? Video, editing, audio, creative director, SEO, uh, AdWords, how to run a funnel. I've learned so many things from YouTube, it's ridiculous. And I put myself on the market and the type of job that I can get is like a 200K plus job. And all I got to do is show them my YouTube channel and show them the money I made. I don't, I don't, I was like, yeah, I had a YouTube channel, nine years, made $8 million. I can walk into so many jobs. They would be happy to have me, but I would be cheating myself, as Wesley Pipes would say. I'd be cheating, I'd be cheating myself because, as um, Mrs. F Mr. and Mrs. Fuller said, once you get out the matrix, you can. Well, once you get out, like there was a point where when I got back to rent a crate, when I got back to a decent job, I felt human again, if that makes sense. I felt like a respectable person again when I got my own place. I felt really good about myself. And there was a moment where I was like working really hard. I got some appointments, made some sales. And. I was like, I was on that dream. I was on that pipe. It's like, well, if I stay here, I make outside salesperson. Maybe, you know, they'll give me a gold American Express gold credit card. Ooh. Then Mason did some whack shit and just slapped my ass back to reality. It's like, okay, back on plan. Back on plan. Been the bartender. Nobody wants the self-accountability that comes with making and living with the choices you make. And that's what raw, unfiltered freedom looks like. When you make a choice, and that's a very good point, and it goes wrong, you can't blame your coworkers. You can't blame anyone else except the man in the mirror or the woman in the mirror. And that is some scary stuff. When I run a campaign and it don't work, it's like, what did I fuck up today? It's all on me. And in the beginning, it's a lot of responsibility. It's really, really heavy. And a lot of people don't want to deal with that. But if you can deal with it, you can become rich in these Americas. All right. So let's get into how to make the leap because this is tricky but it's doable all right so for those of you who are just coming in i want you guys to hit the super chat 10 bucks this is a community supported stream i'm just gonna call this the leap because that's what it's like when you leave your job and you go into this whole situation where everything's on you. There more, there's no more health insurance. There's no more sick days. That's a big leap. So the first thing you have to do is reformat your expectations. So you have to do that. Then two, you have to save money. And one and two are going to be hard if you're not accustomed to doing this. Then number three, hustle 
your face off. When you're in business, and I'll talk about what's going on with me now. There are times that you want to sit back and chill and relax like you have a job. Like if you have a job and you take one day where you do absolutely nothing, you sit in your office and you throw a ball against the wall, you're still going to get paid for that. If you are self-employed and you do that, you ain't getting paid for that. Now, one of the things that I'm doing is... Like, I don't know, for those of you who are subscribed to Disruptive Mail, I'm trying to put up as many discoverable videos as possible right now. And I'm going to tell you why. YouTube works like this. YouTube will find your video, and if it's hot and trending, it'll pop immediately. Okay? And then there's a second pop. Well, not even a second. A second way for a video that's kind of that will or there's a second way for a video to pop which is usually two to three months after you create the video so if you create highly searchable content and you keep building your channel then you should be in a position where your traffic is going to grow month by month your traffic is going to continue to grow your traffic is going because like this month, I'm about 1500 views ahead of where I was this time last month because I've have discoverable videos. Uh, notice that I don't have any, quote, fan content like, hey, man, let me just talk to y'all. It's way too early in the growth pattern of that channel to do that. So I'm doing this during the summer. Now, the summer is really hard because people are barbecuing, they're going to the beach, they're hanging out, they're drinking after work, they're walking on the beach, they're going for walks, they're outside running, they spend every moment they can outside soaking up the sun like a dog, like, oh God, give me this sun. Oh my God, this sun. And especially it's bad for people up north because literally they only have three months of summer. <clears throat> That's it, two and a half, three months of summer. I remember when, I was at a business meeting at Renecrate May 24th. People were still wearing jackets in May because it got real chilly. So for those folks, they are out of their offices. This is why I've been playing around with the, the time that I post videos. Now I've settled on a new pattern. I call it the summer release program where I'm going to do videos in the morning and at lunchtime and possibly in the evening. I'm going to test that once again. Do I want to do videos at this time? I would like to just set up a video whenever I want to and let it go off. But that's not going to grow my channel. That's not going to make me money. So when you take the leap, it's like when you have a kid. That kid ain't yours. That kid owns you. You got to get up when that kid's hungry. <clears throat> you got to change those diapers when that kid poops. You got to look after that kid. So for the first two years, that kid owns you and that's what the leap is like because your business is going to own you you got to make moves when the business says hey fool it's time to make some moves and if that's at one o'clock in the morning it's one o'clock in the morning and i don't <clears throat> i don't believe that people are not cut out for entrepreneurship i believe people are not cut out for responsibility that's the problem because if you're a responsible person if you're a dutiful person, you know, you can make the leap very easily. But if you're a person that's lackadaisical, uh, just like to fly by the seat of your pants, mm -mm. <clears throat> it, ain't, <clears throat> it ain't working. It ain't working. So to make the leap, reformat your expectations, save money 10% to 50% of what you make, and hustle your face off. One of the things that happened when I was doing the storage auction stuff, there was a lot of people that were in my pockets. And it was like, well, if you make so much money, why are you working so hard? And I said, because I don't know when this shit's going to end. I don't know when people are going to say, I don't like Glendon Cameron no more. And I'm going to tell you, 
<clears throat> this is what happened with my book. It was like this, like this, like this, like this. And then it reached a point and it just went. <laughs> That's what happened. It was not like. Uh-uh. It wasn't like that. It's like this sucker fell off a cliff. It was just like. Boom. And it just happened and it was over. That's what happened to me. So when you got something good going on as a business person, at some point it's going to end. How many of you used to watch America's Next Top Model with Tyra Banks? Hot show for a long time. How many of you watched The Apprentice? It was a hot show for a long time. Uh, how many of you watched Happy Days, Good Times, The Jeffersons, All in the Family, The Waltons? In every business, every show, there comes a moment when it is over. And if you can readjust and make some changes, you can survive. But a show is usually predicated on a certain type of dynamic that you can't change it because if you change it, then the show's going to stop being successful much sooner. But there is just moments in time when what you're doing just isn't going to work anymore. And that's why you got to hustle your face off and then elevate your income as you can. So let's just go ahead and stay with the leap. You must work when you don't feel like it. And this is going to go on for about two to five years. And this is an online business. This is an offline business. This is every business. There's going to be a two to five year period where you just going to have to bust whether you feel like it. And like I said, and I always talk about this, like if someone dies, go to the funeral. If someone has a birthday party, go to the birthday party. These are very rare events or once in, I mean, they don't come up every weekend that you could take time off from and then go back to your business. But if you want to party every weekend, you want to hang out every weekend, you want to just have fun every weekend. Um, you ain't going to make it, but this goes back to raw unfiltered freedom because un raw and unfiltered freedom means that anything can happen. You can make something happen or something can happen to you. And this is why the rules of making money have changed. Going to college, getting a degree, coming out of college, even an Ivy League college, because let's, let's talk about that too. Let's say you go to an Ivy League college. These recruiters, right? Do they recruit the whole class? No, they recruit the top 10%. So that other 90%, depending upon how strong their network is, they got to hustle on their own. The recruiters are only, and it might be 5% now, They may because they need less people. I know that tech and Wall Street are fighting for the same kind of people because tech is a high numbers game. Wall Street's a high numbers game. So you got that going on. Let's see what we got in these comments. Once again, if you can hear the sound of my voice, go ahead and hit a $10 super chat. This stream is supported by you. There are no ads. Just saying. Let's see. Um, thank you, Ben, the bartender. You got to manage that money like a CFO. Seriously, this is true. Big Ken Burns days off. Been the bartender speak on it. Keep creating, keep getting discovered. Been the bartender three months. If that frozen creative LLC, you ain't lying. I mean, Cleveland, that must be about that weather. Cause I mean, seriously, you, they got two and a half, maybe three months tops. And it starts getting cool. Like September. Some places, it starts getting cool 
in August. <laughs> Arlen Bolden, for real, I live in Massachusetts, and even though we have the extremes of all four seasons, winter seems to last really six months. I mean, that's a different kind of cold. Eric Dorsey, appreciate you. Excellent content on all your platforms. Thank you. Richard Poe, $5 Super Chat. Thank you, Eric. $10 Super Chat. Appreciate both you guys. Thank you, Richard. Richard. They refer to it as jumping the shark. Could be. Could be. Because one of the things that happens when you make the leap, it is a mental leap. It is a physical leap. And it's a emotional leap. Because let me let me just go ahead and break it down for you. Oh, well, I didn't mean to do that, but we'll just write this up here. And this is what catches people off guard. It is mental. And this is thinking. It's physical. And it's emotional. Now, many people would think mental and emotional are the same. They're not. And I'm going to break it down. Emotional. Fear. Anxiety. Physical. Change. Of habits. This one right here is the one thing that drives people back to their jobs. This right here, the emotional toll. Because, and this can be someone who's a successful entrepreneur. They're making money every month, but it's emotionally exhausting. They're like, man, I'm doing this. Man, it's so hard. I wish I had a job. Translation, I wish I could kick back and still get paid. Because... This is going to last six months to 12 months. This right here. And if you can make it past that, then you, typically you're okay. But the first six to 12 months of having raw, unfiltered responsibility and freedom, it's a mind fuck for many people because you're free to fail and you're free to succeed. The dial, the pendulum can swing either way. I fail all of the time. Uh, one of my goals is to sell stuff every day. Uh, last week, I had like six days. I didn't sell anything. Did I freak out? Nope. I was like, okay. You know why? Because of the law of averages. And this, if you can wrap your head around. All right, that's just looking whack. I keep forgetting I don't have to go all the, <clears throat> all the way over. And that for all you business owners, this should give you some good news. And I'm going to break it down like this. Consistent behavior. yields consistent results. All right, so let's talk about the week I didn't sell anything. Well, what's going to happen is let's just do a calendar. Let's see, like right here. Make sure I get it all in there. One, two, three. All right, so the goal is you make a sale this day. Let's see. Let's make it red. You make a sale. No, let's make it black. Black's for money. Okay. So make a sale, make a sale, make a sale. So this makes you like $10,000. Then this week you sell nothing. Then next week...
go crazy. You do 20K. Consistent behavior yields consistent results. But here's the thing. The consistent results are not going to pop out on a predictable schedule. There's this, this is something that's driven me crazy for many years, but it works. If I consistently, and you hear it once again, hey, this is Glendon Cameron. Um, well, no, it's like, hey, Super Chat. Let's talk about that. For a long time, I did not use Super Chat. And then I was like, you know what? We're going to put it on a 90-day test. And I was like, hey, once again, this is Glendon Cameron. This channel is not supported by ads. So you have an ad-free experience. Donate or support the channel with a Super Chat. Now, I've consistently said that for about two weeks now. There are some days no one does a Super Chat. There might be two days in a row no one does a Super Chat. And then I'll hit a, do a stream and the topic, topic will be bumping. Then I'll like double or triple what I was going to make. So at the end of the week, it still averages out if my behavior remains consistent. But if I start saying, all right, well, they ain't super chatting, so I'm going to stop asking. And if you chart this over 60 to 90 days, you will see that when you stop having this consistent behavior, this is what starts to happen. <laughs> this is what starts to happen. You start having these big gaps in your sales and you're like wait a minute because uh because once another reason is i have the ability that if you catch the replay that you can go under the video make and click that and super chat and a lot of people are super chatting after the stream so by having consistent behavior the law of averages kick in but if your behavior, and I'm going to tell you, it's be hard. Like you have a week, you, you're like, hey, this is Glenn and Cameron. You get 51% off this, this, that. And four or five days straight, nobody buys. Then, middle of the night, you get $2,000, $3,000, $4,000 in sales. But once again, your behavior must be consistent. You can't, I don't care how many, like same thing with chicks. If you are consistent and you approach five chicks a day you will be fucking every night of the week if you wanted to but once again it's hard to stay that consistent because let's say you approach five women and all five women say no then the next day you go out and approach all five women and they say no then you go out to the third day and you approach five women then they all say no then you get to Thursday and you approach five women and four say yes out to five. This is how the law of averages works. It's mind boggling. But if you have consistent behavior, you will get consistent results. They just will not be on a predictable string, which is just like, ah, <laughs> it drives you crazy. Free T3. Uncle G, four-year degree from William and Mary, 21 in the Army, six-figure job, but it was a horrible working for dumb people with no drive, start my own grind, and quit. Awesome. Appreciate that. King Nick Glennon, any thoughts on the feds as to today hiking interest rates a range of one point? Oh, they have to. If the feds do not hike interest rates, what's going to happen is the economy is going to overheat. And then we're going to have inflation. Last time this happened, it took 15 years to correct all that damage that was done in a few months. So hopefully that will kick the can down the road. I don't think it will because there's still other things going on. But once again, if you're an entrepreneur that has a money that comes from cash flow and you're not borrowing money or you don't need to borrow money, it ain't really going to impact you. Been the bartender buying schedule or putting up a free video and it doesn't pop right away. Miss Schilling Hodge, what the hell? What are you talking about? 
Kevin Burns, hang on to that money, man, work hard. Oh, this is one of the things I did because um, when I was making a lot of money from the sale of my book, I didn't spend it. I really didn't spend a lot of that money. It was just mind-boggling to see money stack up, and I really wasn't working that hard. That's a whole different thing. But this is how the law of averages works. And if you're in any kind of sales, <clears throat> and we're all in sales, you got to have some consistent behavior to yield the consistent results. And I, I really want to know what uh, Michelin Hodge, what the hell. <laughs> all right, so the leap. So I'm just to recap, six to 12 months of fear. And this is where saving money comes in. Let me just get rid of that. I'm going to have to slow down. Six to 12 months. And let's just call it what it is. Acute fear. Feeling like you're going to fail at any moment. To offset that, you need to save money. Save as much money as you can. Because money in the bank will adjust your attitude. If you're like one of these people where you you have like zero to maybe 500 in the bank, your every day is going to be wake up in the fear. Because I got enough money in the bank that if I wanted to take a month or two off, I could easily you want to get to the point where if a week you know going back to law averages you have a whack week because the money in the bank keeps me from freaking out it's like oh god i have no sales oh uh, but if i was living hand to mouth yeah i would have freaked out and i was like okay this week is not going the way that i want why why is it is this a seasonal thing is it something i'm saying so i'll just examine that but I have the ability to examine that because I have money. And this this is why you got to save money. You got to cut expenses like that first year of your business. You need to be living on essentials only. I suggest you get rid of your cable. I suggest you get rid of your high cell phone plan. Uh, have a car that's paid off. Ideally, you would be 100 percent debt free. When I started this business, I was debt free. My car was paid off. I had money in the bank and I had and I even followed my own advice. I had Verizon. I took one of my Verizon phones. I canceled the Verizon service. Then I went to um, Metro PCS and I had them flash a phone. So I went from one hundred and sixty bucks a month to forty bucks a month. And I had money in the bank. And this is another thing about money in the bank. It usually takes a long time to stack up some money, but once you start spending, that money can go so quick. And I knew this from previous experiences, so this is why 1500 bucks a month, once I spent it, it was gone. I didn't get no more money at the bank. Just did. Kevin Burns, most importantly, never tell them you have money. These leeches will come out of the woodwork for a handout. <laughs> Michelin. Oh, your example about fucking every night. All right, let me let me just go ahead and say this. And once again, the law of averages kicks in on this. Say you're a regular dude. Let's say you don't even have any game. If you were to approach five women per day, you would have sex probably every night after the first three or four days if you wanted to. Because this is law averages, right? So five chicks per day is 35 women per week, which is 140 per month. Guess how many women the average dude approaches lifetime? Well, yeah, per year. Someone put that in the comments. Let's see what else. Uh, Kevin Burns. Yeah, my chick hated that example. But sex got everyone's attention. I'm going to keep it real because I'm not that handsome. 
But I do have a lot of courage. And when I was out there, because I got a girl, I used to do this. And you will blow your own mind with the stuff like just because see, this is the thing. And I want to see in the in the chat, how many women does the average dude approach per month? Go ahead. Average dude, not a super Mac, not an alpha male, but an average dude, because most dudes are average. Militia, <laughs> LOL. Been the bartender's sex. It was a sales example. The more consistent offers you make, the greater chance of getting the sale. Exactly. Average dude approaches zero to five women a month. And the average dude is getting some pussy here and there, right? Zero to five women a month. So let's do the math on this. Let's go back to the magic whiteboard. And if you're listening to the sound of my voice, you can go ahead and hit that super chat. All right. And this is, as Ben the bartender says, sales example. Product. You. <laughs> You're the product. All right. So the average dude approaches zero to five chicks per month. And typically he's going to approach five chicks in one night when he's at the bar somewhere per month. So this is about 30 a year. All right. The above average dude approaches. Let's not even go with five. Let's go with one. Dude approaches one woman per day. So that's seven times four. That's 28. So he approaches the number of women in one week. Well, in one month that he approaches in a year. And he's going to get... Let's say he's real average. He approaches seven women a week. He's going to get one to two. All right. So we go up to five women. So that's going to be 35 per week. Five more than what the average dude approaches in a year. And this is going to be two to five per week. So over a course of a month. He's going to have 10 to 20 women because he's approached 140. This works on women. This works on cars. This, it works on everything. Works on YouTube. The more offers that I make, the more money that I make. My goal is to make two or three offers a day. I'm usually making one because I'm not trying to make too many offers at Disruptive Mail. So if you, and I'm talking about, you could be fat, you could be broke, you could not have a car. And if you have the courage to make this many offers, this is where you're going to be. Now, let's talk about what happens with a little bit of success. Sales example. So let's say you're in month three of this. Three months, you see the power. Guess what this dude's going to start doing? Just throw that off in the comments. Let's see. Um, Pamela, two, two women a month. Kevin Burns, one more month per month. David Lane, Lance, average man approaches three women per month. Uh, Michelin, three. Kevin, 0.25. All these answers are right because it's zero to five women per month. Christian, RP, Blitz, 10. They ain't the average dude. 
Famously poor, lonely, average dude. MGTO. <laughs> That's why a lot of dudes are going MGTO. Kid birds were fourth of a woman. That's funny. Kevin Burns, this is fucking hilarious. I I gotta go. I'll be back in a bit. <laughs> ben the Ben the bartender. Ding ding ding. He will make more offers and have increased confidence. Because now, once he figures this thing works, because after three months and he's got his legs under him, he's probably gonna start approaching 10 to 15 women a day. <laughs> Which is gonna be a lot of pussy. And what's going to happen is he's going to get tired of fucking. Then what's going to happen is he's going to start to get choosy because he's he's like, I can get a woman whenever. So then he's going to start to try to get quality women. Because he knows anytime he wants to get some, he just go out and makes a few offers. Because he's built up a resistance to being to all of the no's. It's like, okay. And you know, you know, he'll figure out his numbers. He'll like, okay, I got to talk to 10 chicks before one says yes. And then once he learns how uh, body language, once he learns um, certain things, then his closing ratio is going to get better and better and better. So. Kevin Burns, this woman example is portrayed in seduction material. Wow. <laughs> I was just messing around. Been the bartender. Ten no, you won't. Mm -mm. No, you won't. Because notice I said approach. These uh, interactions are going to last 30 seconds to two minutes. Because the approach is... It's like setting up an appointment. Let me make that clear. So 30 seconds to two minutes. So let's go with the two minute thing. So he's going to spend 30 minutes. Thirty minutes per day. When you uh, let's see, an approach is to set up the appointment. When I was doing a lot of telesales. I know what can happen when if you're not really good at selling on the phone. So you perfect. Here's just a script like, how you doing? My name's Glendon. You are looking. If this is your style, you got to be who you are. Damn, you look fucking good today. Um, What's your number? She's going to say yes and no. She's going to say yes and no. And my one of my rules was, look, I'm really busy. But I want to make some time. Let's hang out. Let's hook up. Let's go on a date. What's your name, number? I mean, Lily. I had it down to 30 to 45 seconds. And I bounce. Because you approaching her, number one, is going to excite her. Because most women don't get approached like that. Number two, she's going to wonder about you. You don't want to sit there and have a five or ten minute conversation. No, 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 no. Because in that five or ten minute conversation, you could say or do something that's going to shoot yourself in the foot. Because you don't know this woman. Get to know her a little slowly because you don't want to be paying her a lot of attention. You don't want to be like calling her every day, sending her 12, 15 texts. Because subconsciously, she's like, damn, this motherfucker don't have shit going on. He don't have no other bitches. I'm the only one. Ooh, freak out. He wants a relationship. Oh, God, no. Then she meets someone like me. Well, Good Lord, it's been two weeks since you called me. Oh, I've been busy. How are you doing now? You got time to hang out? Well, no. Okay. Another two weeks. Hey, how you doing? Well, I've been doing this, 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 this. You want to hang out? Mm -mm. All right. Another two weeks. Oh, God, stranger. What are you doing now? It's like, well, I just finished up with some work. You want to hang out? Yes. <laughs> 
God knows when the next time you're going to be free. <laughs> That's how you want them to be thinking about you. You don't want to be available all the time. Yep, you don't want, because the thing is, once you understand that you're not investing hours in doing this, then it becomes like, oh, all right, so I'm getting ready to, to bounce. Make sure you guys hit that super chat real quick. And I need to find some links here because what's going to happen, I know it's going to take a minute. You know, I'm only going to send one thing to... Um, Let's see. Let me get to this form. All right. Host it. All right. For those of you who want stuff at Disruptive Mail, this is the list you want to be on. DM list. This will be the text notification. All right. And then for, let me go here. MailChimp. Let me give you the list. Oh, I got to send. Well, I got to find this. All right. Here we go. All right, because like I say, I'm getting ready to go, so I want to see those super chats when I come back. Because I got to log into all these sites so I can get this code, so I can uh, hit you up on the list. And see sign up forms. All right. And this will be the one for Hustlers Kung Fu. One is a text notification list, and one is an email list. What? You got to be kidding me. Use this one for Hustlers Kung Fu. It will not let me. Put <laughs> Good Lord. It won't let me put that in there. And I think it took out. All right, I'll have these posted under the video. Just come back. It'll be the first comment. I'll pin it because it's not letting me put the stuff in the chat. That is craziness. It's kind of funny. You know? It really is. All right, so I will see you guys later. Uh, won't, this will be the only stream for this channel today. Uh, typically, what's going to happen is there'll be more streams at Disruptive Mail, and that's why I'm separating the list because I used to offshoot off, uh, do like two streams off one notification, so I'm going to move away from that. And there's going to be a lot of stuff that's coming. Oh, crap. Hold on a minute. <laughs> This is this is what I'm talking about. You got to have consistent behavior to get consistent results. So, anyone that needs a course, go below the video and there's 51% off of any course at Hustlers Kung Fu Life Skills. I'll just do this. 51% off life skills links below so just go ahead and grab that 
And if you spend 350 bucks or more, then I will put you into disruptive mail. Now, I uh, don't think I have this set up. I'll just talk about this tomorrow because there's going to be a disruptive mail T-shirt. So this is coming. And the design, I think, is pretty wicked. And it's going to be black. It's going to be short sleeve. And then for the Hustler Kung Fu stuff, that's going to kick off again in the fall, which ain't that really, it ain't that far away. Because it is, what, June 13th today? Two months away. Two, two and a half months away. So it ain't that long away. Uh, yeah, I can't post a link. It won't allow it. So, once again, I'll have more details in tomorrow's stream, which I should be having at like 12 o'clock. And um, hopefully, I'm going to have to prepare because the regular thing didn't work. I don't know what happened with that. So, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys later.